again, in custom, as is the custom, and in order any, to avoid any kind of bias, I introduce the teams by the name of the client organization only. And our second presentation is from the Energy Authority. Thank you. Hello. My name is Jamie Maney. I'm the Vice President of Client Services and Chief Client Officer for the Energy Authority. On behalf of Joni Teofilo, our President and CEO, and our presenting team of Dr. Zung Jin Hu, an Operations science, Research Scientist at the Energy Authority, and Mr. Ed Mount, our Director of Power Supply Planning and Operations, I want to thank the Edelman Committee for this nomination. We also want to give a special thanks to our Edelman coaches, Chris Fry and Yong Hong Chen, for their insight and support. Without further ado, this is the TEA Slice Optimizer. The story of modern America is the story of the search for reliable, efficient energy sources. Electricity helped fuel the Industrial Revolution, paved the atomic age to energize America through the mid part of the 20th century, and is powering the present day digital economy. Sustainability of natural resources in the environment must now be balanced with cost and reliability to provide a 21st century solution to a very complex problem. Today, over 40% of the United States' total energy consumption is in the form of electricity, and Americans have come to expect affordable access to uninterrupted power at the flip of a switch. To that end, clean renewable generation has risen to prominence, both in America's energy policy and across the U.S. landscape, most significantly impacting utilities as they strive to balance the cost of reliable power production and environmental concerns. While the grid is well suited to this task through decades of investment and experience, renewable generation resources such as wind and solar add the new element of variability to this complex system. Now it's not just electricity demand that is changing. Grid operators must also account for variations in supply from these new generation resources so how do utilities maintain grid reliability and integrate renewable sources that are outside of their control, like wind and the sun? Hydroelectricity is one solution, a clean resource itself. Hydroelectric systems have the flexibility and storage capacity to offset the unpredictability of wind and solar power. But how does that work and how does it keep costs low? That question is especially important for utilities in the Pacific Northwest, where over 80% of electricity is produced from hydroelectric power. The Energy Authority developed the Optimizer, a hydroelectric water routing simulation application to help utilities gain more economic value from their hydro, wind, and solar power sources. The Energy Authority is a nonprofit entity designed to help public power utilities gain the highest economic value for their generation in the energy markets. Many of its client utilities draw power from a series of interconnected dams along the Columbia River, known as the Federal Columbia River Power System. The Bonneville Power Administration, or BPA, regulates how utilities use power from the system in order to manage dam operations, maintain infrastructure, monitor flood control, and preserve wildlife that are critical to the region's ecosystem, all while meeting the demands of BPA regulation. So sustainability, reliability, and cost. While these concepts are important to all utilities, they have a special meaning to the Energy Authority and our clients. TEA was created by and exists to serve public power utilities. I want to take a moment to emphasize why this is important. Public power utilities are nonprofit, community-owned entities. As opposed to for-profit, investor-owned utilities, public power is locally governed and managed by the people who are accountable to their neighbors, who are also their customers, rather than to stockholders and investors. Delivering sustainable, reliable, and cost-effective electricity takes on a special meaning to a utility employee when the power plant is located in your community, or when a power outage affects your next-door neighbor, or when the cashier at the grocery store knows that you're the one responsible for his electricity rates. The Energy Authority is a nonprofit corporation charged with helping public power utilities across the nation succeed in their mission to deliver clean, affordable, and reliable power to their fellow community members. TEA provides energy trading and optimization solutions through its domain expertise and its application of operations research to 50 public power utilities across the United States, 
including 13 in the Pacific Northwest who use TEA's slice optimizer. Balancing a power grid is no simple task. Millions of variables are being considered every second, including traditional generation resources, residential and industrial users of electricity, and transmission line capacity. The physical properties of electricity require that it be consumed at the very instant and in the same magnitude that it is generated. The delicate balance between electricity output and total load consumption must be constantly maintained to ensure grid stability. The introduction of large-scale renewable resources, resources further complicates the task and increases the importance of optimizing the grid's existing resources to ensure that clean, sustainable generation is integrated as efficiently as possible. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, wind generation capacity in the U.S. has increased from just over 6 gigawatts in 2003 to more than 45 gigawatts today. The EIA further projects that this number will nearly double by 2040. With the increase in this wind generation capacity comes an increase in the variability of electric supply. The grid must be able to a, a balance supply and demand in real time, even when the wind is not blowing. One way to balance this intermittency of wind generation is through the use of clean, quick response hydroelectric generation. The Pacific Northwest region of the United States has traditionally been dominated by hydroelectric generation resources. The Federal Columbia River Power System consists of 31 dams, and has a total generating capacity of over 20,000 megawatts, or enough capacity to serve nearly 20 million homes. In addition to providing great geography for the creation of hydroelectric generation, the Pacific Northwest and the Columbia River Gorge in particular are well suited for wind generation assets. The tunneling effect that is created by temperature differences between the coastal areas west of the Cascade Mountains and the areas east of the mountains result in world-renowned wind, av wind availability. So what we have is an area with a large concentration of renewable wind generation and a highly flexible resource in the hydro system to integrate that wind and other resources into the grid in an environmentally friendly way. TEA's 13 public power clients in the Northwest contract with the Bonneville Power Administration to each take a slice of this hydro system. These utilities have the contractual right to power, whereby they can optimize their slices of, of a virtual representation of the system within certain constraints in order to provide electricity to their customers. Our challenge was to apply operations research to develop a hydro generation and water routing optimizer that would allow these 13 utilities to harness the power and flexibility of their virtual slice of the Columbia River power system. We knew that there was immense value to be gained by the optimizing the hydro system in a way that is cost effective and allows for the integration of sustainable resources. That value could be gained in three ways. First, having an optimizer gives our utilities the capability to take part in BPA's slice contract. Part of the value of the slice contract is that it enables utilities to manage their virtual hydro system in order to integrate their other non-hydro resources into the grid. The alternative would be for the utilities to pay BPA to integrate these resources for them at higher rates. Here, Don McMaster of the Cowlitz PUD describes the value his utility receives from this benefit. The uh, periods of uh, high uh, flow uh, in, the, in the river system, the Bonneville system, makes it very difficult to incorporate wind and other renewable resources at times of uh, oversupply. To incorporate those renewables, we save just shy of $12 million a year uh, by using the slice product. And uh, over the life of the slice contract, we'd save a little over $212 million. To do it without the optimizer would be extremely difficult. The second benefit of the optimizer is that it allows T's clients to manage their costs through automation. Each utility would require a staff of 14 to 19 people to manually plan and execute a power supply portfolio without an optimizer. For small nonprofit utilities like Franklin County PUD, partnering together to create a solution that leverages economies of scale to keep their electricity rates low is of primary importance. The costs of of having our own optimizer. We can never afford it, you know, with the trading desk and, and the additional staff that we would have to have. Uh, and, and by partnering, not only with TEA, but other similar kind of utilities out in the region, uh, the economies of scale are just massively different for us. Finally, in addition to enabling and automating the process, the optimizer is asked to live up to its name and optimize. 
By finding optimal solutions in real time, the optimizer maximizes the use of slice generation in times of relative scarcity and high prices, while saving resources in times of low demand and low prices. The increased revenue that utilities like Clark PUD gain by optimizing the flexibility of the system to maximize its value goes directly to reducing their overall costs. The optimizer takes all that information, the, the hourly pricing, the daily pricing, the weekly pricing, weekdays versus weekends, and then combines that with the constraints that are placed upon the hydro system at, at different points and tries to come up with what is the best scenario for us to extract the most value, the most dollars out of, out of that uh, out of that puzzle. So uh, those maximized revenues uh, come back to us and help us reduce our, our overall cost to our, to our rate payer. Next, Ed Mount, TEA's Director of Power Supply Planning and Operations, will discuss the many challenges we had to overcome in order to achieve these crucial benefits. Ed. Thank you, Jamie. As you've just heard, the optimizer creates economic benefit in a number of ways. The optimizer maximizes the capability of the utility to integrate renewable resources at a much lower cost. It greatly reduces the number of people required to manage this highly complex resource, and the optimizer provides flexibility to take advantage of market opportunities and respond to unexpected events. However, achieving these benefits required a robust solution that could handle a highly complex and challenging set of criteria. I'd like to take a few moments to discuss the more significant challenges that led to the development of the optimizer solution. So our first challenge we had to model and ultimately solve through optimization a very complex hydro system. This system consists of multiple large dams that are hydraulically linked to one another along the main stem of the mighty Columbia River. While this hydro system provides for a large amount of flexibility, it does so subject to a wide variety of operational constraints. In addition to providing a flexible resource for power, the Federal Columbia River Power System is operated to provide other benefits to the region, such as flood control, irrigation, endangered species and wildlife protection, and recreation, just to name a few. These constraints come in the form of maximum and minimum discharges, four bay levels, spill flows, tailwater levels, and generating capacity, as well as maximum and minimum rates of change for many of these constraints. On top of these constraints, the system is subject to other system variables, most notably the inflows coming into the system. These constraints and variables apply to each dam, and these dams are hydraulically linked such that the discharge from an upstream dam will have a time-lagged impact on the inflow of the, of the downstream projects. So if you think about it for a second, the discharge of a particular project directly affects that project's generation and tailwater elevation. But that discharge will also have an effect on the forebay elevation of a downstream project. So similarly, a change in a downstream project's forebay through its discharge will have an effect on the tailwater elevation of the upstream project. So our next challenge, we needed, we needed to have our answers fast. The optimizer had to solve uh, the system and get a generation schedule on an hourly basis to coincide with the hourly power trading markets and to incorporate changes in such things as inflows, turbine outages, or even the amount of wind needed to integrate into the portfolio. All of these things can change and, and, and can happen at any time. Uh, the optimizer had to do this quickly enough to give power traders and schedulers enough time within the hour to integrate the hydro generation output into the overall portfolio, and it had to allow users to even re-optimize if needed to improve the overall portfolio value for that hour. Now, not only did this have to be done for the next hour, but it had to be done for the next 240 hours, or 10 days, in order to comply with the requirements of the BPA slice contract. So with six projects, about 25 constraints and variables for each project, covering a time horizon from next hour through hour 240, 
that yields about 36,000 constraints and variables that have to be managed for each slice utility simulated system. This is just to arrive at an hourly generation schedule. And this has to be done every day, at least once an hour, and in many cases, multiple times within an hour. Now finally, and perhaps the most challenging, is that within this complex hydro model are several nonlinear formulaic equations that are functions of the time-lagged hydro parameters of upstream projects. So it became clear to us that if we were to solve this system quickly and maintain the flexibility, that these, nonlinear, these nonlinearities would require some form of acceptable linear conversion. Now, to meet these challenges, TEA create, created the optimizer to, one, solve this complex virtual multi-project hydro system within defined operating constraints, again, some of which are nonlinear. Two, to do so rapidly and robustly while preserving the full flexibility of the system to respond to changes in variable supply, demand, electricity prices. And three, to allow our power traders and managers to quickly make optimal decisions. So in short, we face three overarching design criteria, speed, flexibility, and control. So not surprisingly, these criteria are often contradictory, uh, so we had to strike a very careful balance uh, between them. So speed, the over overriding requirement for managing the slice contract is to enable the real-time power traders and schedulers to make good decisions within the tight time frames of the wholesale power trading business. So in TEA's case, any single power scheduler has to make decisions for as many as five utilities simultaneously. So for us, this led to the decision to build a globally linearized model with judicious use of mixed integer programming. Flexibility. So the second criteria is to preserve as much of the solution space as possible so that the user can access the full range of generation output. Now, as previously mentioned, the ability to adjust generation to respond to changes in both loads and variable supply, that's of great value in today's energy landscape. So a solution that provided fast answers by excluding large parts of the solution space, for us, that's a poor trade-off. So this demand led to great care and creativity in the application of this linearization process. And then control. So the drawback to a fast, linearized solution is that it's deterministic. So in reality, supply, demand, hydro conditions, river operations, and the market, these are all uncertain. They can vary rapidly and at any time. So it's not practical for a system to fully automate this dispatch process. The solution needs to allow users to account for these uncertainties within strict time constraints. Users need to be able to manage the solution space such that the optimizer can provide solutions in response to constantly changing conditions. So again, for us, this led to a design which allows the users to, one, modify the solution space within their own constraints, and the user can weight the durability of those constraints based on their assessment of the risks that are involved. Two, uh, to distill the entire complex of um, variables down to two that are meaningful for a power trader, uh, and those things are basically total generation, and price. So right now, Dr. Zheng Jin Hu is going to present some of the details on the innovative operations research techniques that TEA used in the development of the optimizer solution. Thank you, Ed. I'm going to present the technologies behind the TEA optimization solution. We're faced with a highly nonlinear dynamic optimization problem. I'll start by discussing several alternative approaches per our three design criteria. Because of the nonlinear nature of the problem, the, the natural approach is to solve it directly using nonlinear programming we would have the full flexibility, but due to the complexity of the problem, it will be very slow and can provide little control. The second option is to solve the linear program <laughs> counterpart, and just the opposite. The major problem is that we will lose a lot of flexibility, 
by chopping off a big portion of the nonlinear solution space. The third option, Monte Carlo simulation, is like uh, randomly throwing darts and <coughs> wish you hit the target. However, for the problem of this size, we need to sample at least 100,000 different passes, and it is hard to achieve any of our design objectives. Finally, we decided to take a mo modern operational research technique called mixed integer programming. We were able to achieve a delicate balance between speed and the flexibility. We have built a fast and a robust solution for which the flexibility is not much compromised. Meanwhile, the solution provides excellent control by supporting various means to intervene with optimization. First, I'm going to quickly reiterate the modeling challenges mentioned by Ed. The hydroparameters of each dam can be divided into three categories, elevation, water, and energy. There are complex constraints that apply to all the variables and can span multiple hours or even days. Besides, perhaps more challenging, all the variables are tightly coupled with complex nonlinear equations, like the following. And it requires a large number of nonlinear constraints <coughs> to maintain the equalities in the model, making it very difficult to solve. To deal with these challenges, the first and important step we took is to reduce its dimensionality. But notice that the system only have two degrees of freedom. Each hour, we need to decide how much water to discharge downstream and how much water to release through turbine as opposed to spilling over the dam. In other words, the key decision variables are discharge and turbine flow, and they all belong to the water category. This leads to the design decision to consolidate to water variables only. It has the big advantage that we no longer need to maintain these nonlinear equalities. However, it also comes with cost. It will require converting the constraints on the fly, meaning that every time we get a new constraint, we'll have to dynamically convert it onto the water variables. And we are still left with many nonlinear constraints. But despite of the remaining nonlinear constraints, we still observe a significant speed up of 100 times. A simple two-day model is solved in a couple of seconds instead of minutes. Now, let me show you how this works using a two-project example. Here are all the variables we need to solve. We have nonlinear functions, volume on four bay, tail water on discharge and downstream four bay, and generation on turbine flow, four bay, and tail water. These equalities tie everything up, making the problem even more complex, considering we have to solve it for six projects. So it would be nice to get rid of them. Now, Let's just focus on one dam. For example, if we remove the link between volume and four bay, all the constraints previously on four bay can now be expressed in terms of water volume instead. Similarly, we can do the same for the tail water and generation functions. Tail water constraints are now expressed in terms of discharge and downstream water volume. Generation constraints are now expressed in terms of four other parameters. Finally, since all the nonlinear equalities have been eliminated, we can now safely remove all the non-water variables. The model is now much more simplified, except we're still left with lots of nonlinear constraints. Next, we show how to linearize the nonlinear constraints we just obtained. 
We'll illustrate using two examples. Let's look at the following 3D plot of the tailwater function. After dimension reduction, a constraint on the tailwater would now correspond to a nonlinear constraint on two other parameters. Graphically, imagine using a horizontal plane representing the plot and obtain a section. Notice here, the highlighted area is the solution space, which is clearly nonlinear, and in fact, concave. To address that, we apply the classic piecewise linear approximation on the nonlinear contour. Each of the tangent line corresponds to a linear constraint. Note that this needs to be done on the fly for many projects for every single hour. In addition, due to the complexity of the tailwater function, we'll have to resort to Newton's method when calculating these tangent lines because there's no closed form for its inverse. As another example of linearization, generation of a dam is a product of turbine flow and the efficiency factor, or EF. After dimension reduction, EF is a complex nonlinear function of three other parameters. A simple linearization is to assume a constant EF. However, this is clearly not accurate because in reality, EF fluctuates, as the graph shows. To accommodate the approximation error, we will need to set aside about 5% of the total generation as buffer to avoid violation of generation constraint. And that is a big compromise of flexibility. On a side note, the previous piecewise linear approximation approach doesn't quite work due to the high dimensionality of a generation function. To solve this problem, we propose a Taylor expansion based approach. In more detail, we first identify a fixed point P and then expand around it. We will discard the high order terms to ensure the linearity of resulting constraints. This idea turned out to be very effective. We can now safely reduce the buffer by 50 times. So instead of imposing 250 megawatt of generation buffer, we now require to set aside only five megawatt. And even better, the speed is not much compromised because the resulting constraint are still linear. So after all the linearizations, we obtained a model of about 50,000 variables, among which 3,000 of them are binary. It has also 30,000 constraint with 300,000 non-zeros. We feed them into a very efficient solver, Groby. However, the runtimes are, not, are still not very satisfactory, especially it fluctuates, as shown by the red curve. To further improve speed, we adopted an idea called lazy constraints, supported by Groby. The idea is to identify a set of constraints that are unlikely to be binding, and we'll hold on adding them to the model. Instead, we feed them later through a callback, so after linear program relaxation is complete. With this idea, we obtained a much more stable and shorter runtime, as shown by the blue curve below. Next, I'll shift the gear to talk about Another important aspect, control. There are various uncertainties in the river system. In particular, the inflow and constraints are all subject to change at any time without notice. This is like when you drive on the highway and the road might shift on you. Due to unplanned turbine outages or unexpected rainfall, for example, we build a mechanism to protect around it we allow the planners to define their own constraints to mitigate this type of risks. They can also weight these constraints based on the risks involved. The above plot shows the optimizer can produce a four-bay curve. 
that closely observes the constraints entered by TEA planners. As another example of control, the system allows the real-time traders to react to a constantly, constantly changing market. They can submit generation targets, buy sales, low forecast dynamically, and have the system to quickly re-optimize for them in about 10 to 20 seconds. This is achieved by warm starting the engine with existing full 10-day solution, locking down the majority of solution in the future, incorporating the latest market changes, and then re-optimizing. In this slide, we quickly summarize the objective function. It consists of four main parts. Total revenue of electricity sell, total transaction cost, and total penalty for violating constraints, and total penalty for deviating from user targets. The slice optimizer is able to optimize to any combination of the four objectives. And users can easily adjust the penalties, so it is very flexible. Next, I will present some sample outputs. This plot here shows the system is able to follow the price curve, indicated by the red dashed line. It is able to ramp up the generation when the prices are high to generate more value. Meanwhile, the system also provides feasible max and min generations to let the utilities know the actual generation capability of the physical river system. This greatly helps them balance their energy portfolio. And notice that none of these will be possible to know without an optimizer. Other than price, the system can also optimize to hourly and daily generation targets. This plot here compares the total system generations with user targets, showing the optimizer is able to satisfy user request most of the time. Here is a detailed breakdown of total system generation onto the six projects. Note that the traders do not need to know any of these. Our tool actually hides all these gory details of the river systems and complex equations from the traders so that they can just focus on two things that are most meaningful to them, total generation and price. That way we can allow each TEA trader to work with up to five utilities simultaneously. But so far, we have described the modeling aspect of the solution, and it is equally important to deploy it to a robust engineering platform. On the back end, we have in total eight servers divided into application servers and optimization servers. All the servers are clustered to provide low balancing and failover capabilities. At the core of the entire system, the optimization engine is deployed on all optimization servers equipped with Groby 5.5, a very reliable and efficient software engine. In the front end, we have user interfaces that run on client's terminals. Here comes our two main user interfaces. On the main GUI, show on the left, there is a dashboard card for each utility to monitor the real-time situations. Users can also open a custom view to check out the actual data and perform detailed analysis and plotting. In addition, the system has APIs to integrate with TEA and client's trading systems. Finally, some production statistics. Since the product went live on October 3rd, 2012, the Slice Optimizer has been running 24 by 7, surviving various tough water situations and consistently producing feasible hydro generation schedules for all our 13 utility customers. The average runtime is two and a half minutes for the full 10-day optimization and 18 seconds for the re-optimizations. 
Finally, a recap. We have developed an efficient and robust optimization tool that emphasizes speed, flexibility, and control. This is mainly achieved by judicious mixed integer programming approximation and overcoming many challenges in modeling and engineering. Although the slice optimizer was developed on the Columbia River, we be, the technology can be adapted to other regulated river systems around the world. Thank you. I'll pass back to Jamie. Thank you, Jen. <clears throat> In conclusion, through a strategic partnership with our public power clients, the Energy Authority was able to solve an extremely important and complex problem through the novel application of operations research concepts. Given the challenges facing electricity grids across the world to balance cost, reliability, and sustainability, and the substantial amount of carbon-free hydroelectric generation available, the optimizer also has the opportunity to provide long-reaching solutions in many other areas. But most importantly for us, this fast, flexible, and controllable solution is in place today and used every hour to optimize the hydropower for 13 public power utilities, representing 1 million end users of electricity. The SLICE optimizer is factoring in over 150 hydrodynamic constraints, 50,000 variables for six dams simultaneously across 13 clients in less than 13 minutes to deliver over $800 million in projected benefits to TEA's clients over the life of the product. As nonprofit entities, this value flows directly to the citizens of their communities through lower rates and more reliable services. I think Mr. Ed Brost, General Manager of Franklin County PUD, sums it up nicely for us here. Any additional dime of revenue that we can squeeze out of this system, uh, we return to our customers in the form of lower rates. Uh, and when customers have lower rates to pay, they can produce and sell their goods and services for a lesser cost. I mean, so it's, it's a direct tie, uh, and, and that's why it's so important to us to, to maximize the value that we get out of the system so we can return it to our customers. Reliable power at a lower cost is, is a benefit no matter how you slice that one up. So finally, we want to acknowledge and thank our 13 public power partners in this venture, as well as the Bonneville Power Administration and Garobi Optimization. Without the assistance and expertise of the people in these organizations, we would not have succeeded in our mission. Thank you, and we'll take any questions you may have.